Hello, and welcome to this level 3 mathematics in context training video for Pearson at Excel. In this video, we'll be looking at formulating and solving linear programming problems up to three variables. Here's specification. In this video, we'll be focusing on plotting the graphs, solving syntax equations, formulating problems, and interpreting those solutions from the graphs. There are no relevant formulae available in the formula book for this particular topic. Here we have the mapping document that shows where this topic links to GCSE and GCE. It features in level mathematics in D1. It features in GCSE in plotting graphs, solving syntax equations, finding regions for inequalities. At A level, there is formulating linear program problems and solving using the relevant methods. So, how can we teach this particular topic? So, some ideas. We can look at smooth recipes, include two or three different fruits. They can model the cost of fruits and the amounts for each needed and work out the best way to make a profit. They can also do some research on companies that make two or three products, which ones sell the best, how can they see which one would be the best to produce them the most of, what costs are there involved. We also have got some key skills that are required for this topic. Students need to be able to comprehend the language used in inequalities, such as converting phrases such as at most or at least. They also need to be able to plot straight line graphs, either using a table of values or maybe the intercept method. They also need to be able to plot graphs of inequalities and indicate regions satisfied by those inequalities. They must also make sure they can solve syntax equations graphically or algebraically. So here's an exam question from 2020, paper two, question 11. This one is about a, a company that manufactures packs of feed for animals. Two of the ingredients used are bone meal and grain. We've got the amounts of protein, fat and carbohydrate per 100 grams for bone meal and grain provided. Each packet of feed must contain at least 180 grams of protein 120 grams of fat and 180 grams of carbohydrate. We're told to use X for the number of grams of bone meal used in each packet and Y for the number of grams of grain used in each packet. For part A, we need to show that this information gives us these following inequalities. There's also a maximum of 600 grams of bone meal and one kilogram of grain available for the manufacturer of each packet. For part B, we need to write down two further inequalities to represent the information. OK, so for part A, we can see that the bone meal contains 40 grams of protein, 20 grams of fat, 20 grams of carbohydrate per 100 grams. The grain contains 10 grams of protein, 15 grams of fat and 60 grams of carbohydrate per 100 grams. Each packet of feed must contain at least 180 grams of protein, 120 grams of fat and 180 grams of carbohydrate. So these amounts that each of the ingredients contains we can treat those percentages. We can see for protein, we've got 40% for the X, which is the bone meal, and we've got 10% for the grain, which is the Y. For the fat, we've got 20% and 15%. For carbohydrates, we've got 20% and 60%. So if we convert those inches to decimals, we can say that 0.4x plus 0.1y must be greater than or equal to 180 because it's got to be at least that amount. 0.2x plus 0.15y must be greater than or equal to 120. 0.2x plus 0.6y must be greater than or equal to 180. We must have integer coefficients. So if we multiply those inequalities, we can then get the required constraints. For part B, we know we must have a maximum. So that means it must be less than or equal to. Again, X stands for the number of grams. So we must have 600 grams of bone meal. So X must be less than or equal to 600. And Y, we must change that one kilogram to grams. 
so y must be less than or equal to 1000. Part C wants us to represent these inequalities on the grid provided. We must also then label the feasible region with an R. So if we take each of those inequalities, we can plot them either using a table of values or we can use the intercept method. So for equation one, we've got 4x plus y is greater than or equal to 1,800. Summing in x is zero and y equals zero, we've got the points zero, 1,800, and 450, zero. We can plot those points and join them up. We can do the same for equations two and three, join those points. And four and five, the x is less than or equal to 600, and the y is actually equal to 1,000, are straightforward horizontal and vertical lines. What we've got to make sure we do is indicate where we need to be. So a good point of view is that if we can see y is greater than something, that means we'll be above the line. If we can see y is less than or equal to something, we'll be below the line. So using that little tip, we can see that r is placed inside that region there. Okay, there's part D, part E, part F. So we've got the cost of bone meal and the cost of grain per gram. The manufacturer wants to minimize the cost of bone meal and grain. We need to write down an objective function. In part E, we've then got to find the exact coordinates of the point given that minimum value of the cost. We've then got that each packet of feed weighs 800 grams. Once the bone meal and grain have been added, the remainder of the packet is made up of fiber, the cost of 50p per kilogram. We've then got to calculate the minimum cost of all the ingredients needed for the packet of feed. So for part D, if it's 0.3 pence per gram, 0.1 pence per gram for the bone meal and the grain, we could therefore say that C must equal 0.3x plus 0.1y. We can then plot this objective function or use the vertex method to find our minimum value for C. Here we can see I've plotted 3x plus y equals 1,800. If you set the C to a value, you can then plot that objective function. Because we want to minimize it, we want to be heading towards the origin there. So we can see that circle point is where our minimum value lies. We can then solve those two equations simultaneously to give our values 375 and 300 for x and y. Therefore, using those for part f, if each packet weighs 800 grams, if we subtract those two values, the 375 and the 300 from the 800, it means we must have 125 grams of fiber left. Converting the 50p per kilogram into 0.05 pence per gram, we can then use the amounts and the price per gram, multiplying to then give a cost of 148.75 pence per packet. Here's the mark scheme. You can see there's alternative methods for part A. For part E, there's marks given five that using the objective line method or point testing. For part F, the price can be given in pounds or pence. So this topic is one that students have struggled in the past. Here's some comments, some examples from the past. So in 2018, we can see that a lot of students were making errors writing the coefficients. So rather than using coefficients of x, y, and z, they just wrote x plus y plus z is less than or equal to, which is using the correct coefficients. In 2019, students again struggle with this question. So lean probing is definitely an area of weakness. June 2022, student struggles to draw the constraints on the grid. This is a GCSE topic, drawing the constraints on, a, on an inequality grid, therefore something they need to practice. In 2023, again, it was a challenge for most candidates. And one note there is that the candidates were not converting the constraints to integer coefficients. So some top tips. Students should be practicing rearranging to perform and collecting like terms. They need to make sure they understand how they can convert phrases involving inequalities into algebraic form. They need to make sure they can plot straight line graphs and indicate required regions. 
Thank you for listening to this video. I hope it was helpful.